We all know the story. 66 million years ago, an asteroid the size of a mountain struck the Earth, ending the reign of the dinosaurs in a firestorm of ash and devastation. It was a catastrophe of unimaginable proportions, a single violent day that changed the course of life forever. But what if I told you that wasn't the worst day our planet has ever known? Not by a long shot. What if I told you there was another extinction? A cataclysm so profound, so utterly devastating, it makes the death of the dinosaurs look like a dress rehearsal. An event that wiped out nearly all life on Earth. Welcome to the greatest murder mystery in planetary history, the Great Dying. Journey back with me, 252 million years. The Earth is an alien planet. Almost all land is fused into the single supercontinent of Pangaea. The climate is hot, arid, and stalking this world is a cast of monsters. Forget T-Rex. Meet the Gorgonopsid, an apex predator, a horrifying fusion of wolf and lizard with fangs like daggers. Meet Scutosaurus, a one-ton, armor-plated reptile, a living tank browse on tough vegetation. In the rivers swims Diplocolus, the bizarre, boomerang-headed amphibian. Life in the Permian was brutal, but it followed an order. It was, against all odds, thriving. But that order was about to be broken. In the layers of rock all over the world, paleontologists find a boundary line. Below it, a rich and diverse fossil record. Directly above it, an eerie, almost total silence. 96% of all marine species, 70% of all terrestrial vertebrates, gone. Life had been annihilated. This wasn't a slow, evolutionary process. This was a slaughter. But with no giant impact crater to be found, where was the murder weapon? The planet's detectives, our geologists, finally found the clues. The killer didn't come from the sky, it came from deep within the Earth itself. In modern-day Siberia, they found the evidence, a vast volcanic province they named the Siberian Traps. Now, don't picture a single volcano. Imagine an area the size of Western Europe, where the ground itself tore open and lava hemorrhaged from colossal fissures in the Earth's crust. It didn't erupt for a day or a week. It bled fire, almost continuously, for nearly two million years, burying a continent in molten rock and pumping a truly unimaginable volume of toxic gas into the atmosphere. But lava, even on this scale, can't boil the oceans or poison the entire globe. The lava wasn't the real killer, it was only the trigger. The true horror was what the volcanoes were breathing. The colossal plumes of CO2 and sulfur dioxide from the eruptions began a chain reaction of planetary death. First came the acid rain. The sulfur dioxide mixed with atmospheric water, creating clouds of concentrated sulfuric acid that poured down, burning forests, poisoning rivers, and sterilizing the land. But that was just the opening act. The CO2 began to trap heat, triggering a runaway greenhouse effect. Global temperatures skyrocketed. As the land was being scorched, a far more sinister catastrophe was beginning silently in the one place no one could see, the deep ocean. The oceans began to suffocate. Warm water simply cannot hold as much dissolved oxygen as cold water. As the planet heated up, vast dead zones began to spread from the seabed upwards, choking the life out of the oceans. The great reefs, the ancient trilobites, they all asphyxiated. The marine food web was collapsing from the bottom up, but a suffocating ocean doesn't just die, it becomes something else. Something monstrous. In these oxygen-starved waters, a different, more ancient form of life exploded. Anaerobic bacteria that didn't need oxygen. They breathed sulfates and, as a waste product, they released immense quantities of a toxic gas. In these oxygen-starved waters, a different, more ancient form of life exploded. Anaerobic bacteria that didn't need oxygen. They breathed sulfates and, as a waste product, they released immense quantities of a toxic gas. Hydrogen sulfide, H2S. At first, this poison gathered in the depths, killing everything it touched. But as the concentration grew, it began to bubble up, 
erupting from the ocean's surface and into the air. Imagine the entire planet smelling of rotten eggs, a scent carried on a toxic wind. The H2S gas attacked and tore apart the ozone layer, allowing lethal UV radiation to flood the planet, burning anything that had survived. And one final, terrifying detail. These bacteria were pigmented. As they bloomed, they turned the oceans of the world a sickening, ghostly shade of purple. A planet with a poison atmosphere and purple, toxic oceans. This was the true face of the Great Dying. After the fury passed, Earth was a zombie planet. Life had been almost entirely erased. It would take millions of years for ecosystems to even begin their recovery. In this global graveyard, fungi grew everywhere, feeding on the dead forests. Only a few of the hardiest creatures survived. One bizarre, tusked reptile called Lystrosaurus somehow made it through and for a time became the most common animal on a planet of ghosts. The story of the Great Dying is not just a tragedy from a forgotten world, it is a chilling echo. The weapon that killed 96% of all life 252 million years ago was a massive, geologically rapid release of CO2 that triggered runaway warming and ocean acidification. Does that sound familiar? It is a mirror of what our industrial civilization is doing today. We are the new volcanoes. We are unlocking carbon that has been buried for millions of years, warming the planet and acidifying the seas. We are running the same experiment with the same planet using the same fundamental chemistry. Earth's history has proven that life is resilient, but it has also proven that the price of that resilience can be the utter annihilation of the dominant species. The Earth has a fever once more. The only question is, will we learn the lesson written in the ashes of the great dying? Or are we simply writing the next chapter in the planet's long, brutal history of extinction?